Welcome to Open House. Putting your house in the market can mean weeks waiting for it to sell while you struggle to keep it neat and tidy while potential buyers drop by. But here on Open House, we do things a little bit differently. We'll take one great property and stage it for a one-off open day event to which we'll invite the best possible buyers and ask them to put in their best and final offers by the end of that very same day. It can be risky, but if it works, then it certainly pays off. All we need now is that one really great house. And today, I've come to Breton near Peterborough to help a homeowner sell their home. The first houses here were built in the 1970s. So, in township terms, Breton is something of a brick-built baby brother to the nearby city of Peterborough. And with all the facilities of a small city on its doorstep and an average property price of just over 150000 the area represents an attractive option for buyers seeking affordable modern homes. Ten years of property developing has taught me that if first impressions let a property down, it can be a struggle to sell it. But my initial feelings here are good. Now this is a fantastic lounge come dining room. Somebody's put an awful lot of effort into making it look so gorgeous. And even the carpet is a thing of beauty. There's not a single mark on it. I'm just glad I wiped my feet. And the kitchen is most definitely work in progress. But having said that, it looks like somebody's done a lot of work in here already. You've got these very nice new units. You've got a new cooker here, new hob. And space-wise, it works really well. Somebody's really thought about this. It's just a case of all the finishing touches. So, a superb three-bedroom house in a great location, brilliantly presented, but who's gone to all this effort, and why are they selling? Hmm. Sharon Hay bought the house in 1990 for £45,000. Now she's ready to move on, but she's spent £14,000 doing the place up, and she needs a good return on her investment. Now, Sharon, um, you've obviously put a lot of effort into your house, so why, why do you want to sell? Um, I think now for me, I don't have the same sort of need to, to have the town centre on my doorstep. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sort of turned into a little bit of a home bird. I like to potter at home, uh, pot in the garden, and um, I'd, I'd now like to go to a sort of village location mm. and probably start doing the same thing and, you know, renovating again. Really? <laughs> I'm going to do some research, I'm going to speak to your estate agent, get back to you with a battle plan, and um, fingers crossed that we'll achieve it. Great stuff, thank you. So Sharon dreams of 146 grand to develop a new property. She's gambling her dream on a one-off open viewing. But does her estate agent think 146k is realistic? The, the jeopardy here for me is that um, Sharon has obviously done up her house, she's spent a lot of money on it, and we need to make sure that she gets some kind of return on that, otherwise, quite frankly, it would all have been a fruitless That's experience. Right. Um, what do you think is a good marketing price? Um, I, I'm going to go with my gut feel around about 134, 135 thousand pounds. That would be a good place to start. I should obviously hope for a bit more than that, but yeah. uh, you've got to you've got to st pitch it right, and then hope the market will will, will take you forward and get the right sort of money. Okay. Well, what, what I'm going to do, I mean, your house is looking great anyway, but I want to improve on perfection. That's my goal. Um, and if you can line up some really serious buyers mm -hmm. um, and get them all chomping at the bit for the open day. That would be brilliant. Yeah. So we need to make sure this house is looking absolutely infallible. It's going to look gorgeous from top to bottom. And you've done a brilliant, brilliant job. I would say 95% of this house is excellent. You are the queen of perfection. We just need to improve on it very, very slightly. We also need to think about first impressions when you walk up to the house, the garden, the front garden. Yeah. Let's improve that. You've got a brilliant back garden or the, the basis of a brilliant back garden. Mm -hmm. Let's sell the lifestyle there and let's just dress the house. Let's yeah. just dress it, because at the moment you've got a beautiful picture, we just need to make sure the framing's lovely as well. Yeah. Yeah? Great, sir. Are you willing to get, you know, the elbow grease out one last time? I am indeed, yeah. I've done it all this time, and one last sort of, one last ditch effort, yeah. Yeah. That's great. It, it's, it's worth it. I think it's going to be worth it. So the first stages of the transformation need to kick into action. Good to her word, Sharon gets her hands dirty and starts painting the kitchen and even takes a scraper to her untidy garden furniture.
we've got to get everything looking just right for Sharon's one-off open day viewing. She dreams of selling for 146000 while her agent thinks 135000 is a good marketing price to attract buyers. It's up to us to see if our careful staging can get Sharon closer to her dream. And that means nothing can be overlooked. The little touches can make or break a sale. A splash of culinary colour will finish off and freshen up the kitchen. And we've done our fair share elsewhere because this house is finally staged to wow those buyers. Buyers need tidy, tranquil gardens front and rear. So we've tidied and rearranged the messy furniture and added a few choice plants at the back and transformed the scruffy front garden into the kind of green space that beckons buyers in. And inside, no longer will they find a half-finished kitchen with old dated lino. Now it's a freshly tiled, well-dressed kitchen to really push buyers' buttons. In short, we've addressed the weaknesses in an otherwise perfect property and transformed it from a good house into a great one. Now all we need is a good turnout of potential buyers. So question one, um, how many people do you think you've got turning up today? Um, around ten, I've said. Okay, yeah. and question number two, which is slightly more important than question number one, question number two is, how many of those people do you think might place a bid? I'm quite confident that we're going to get some bids on this, um, definitely. Um, we've probably got at least four or five people I'm really ring, you know, hoping for, okay. that, that rooting for, so... Uh, Alright, we'll yeah. see what happens, shall we? Definitely. The first buyer has arrived, and it's all systems go. So do you want to have a look round? Come on in. There we go. Or take your uh, shoes off, really. No, no, you're fine, you're fine, you're fine. So what we've got here is a nice big, as you can say, open plan, uh, plan lounge and dining space. Hello, I'm Christian, lovely to meet you. Let you uh, have a look. Look at this. In the bathroom. No, wow, this is fabulous. Things are looking up with buyers arriving in numbers. Hi, how are you? I'm Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Pleased Please to meet you. you. Hello. Come on through. Thank you very much. More people, more people. Hello. Hello, I'm Christian. Nice to meet you. Hello. Sharing viewers between Sharon and myself is proving to be a winning strategy. Kitchen's been newly fitted. Please with the finished result. I'm sure you are. It's decent size, inbuilt storage. Hiya, please meet you. I'm Sharon. And no one seems to have a bad word to say about the property. This is lovely. Did this used to be two rooms? No, it's always been open plan. You're not going to get a double bed in here, though, are you? No, however, you could use this for a study yeah. instead. Yeah. So it is a good size, isn't it? Yeah. yeah well, there you have it. Our open house is now officially closed. The viewings are over and all those potential buyers have just a couple of hours to decide whether or not they're going to place a bid on Sharon's gorgeous property. Anxiety and nerves are kicking in but all we can do in the meantime is just sit and wait. Sharon's dream of village life hinges on the next couple of hours and as the bids must go through the agent she'll be completely in the dark until after the deadline. Meanwhile potential buyers are weighing up their options. Well, hi Chris. It's Frank again. Um, yeah, I'd like to make a, an offer on that uh, place. At last, the deadline is upon us, and now it's down to the estate agent Chris to put us out of our misery. Hey Chris, it's raining. What happened? Yeah, the weather's gone awful, hasn't it? Mate? I hope it's not an omen. I hope not. Too. I hope not. Serious. Fingers crossed. We've had a couple of bids. Okay. Okay. This is the best one of the lot. Okay. So if you want to kind of take care of that and let me know. I will do. I'm going to go in there now, reveal it. Brilliant. And I will be in touch. Excellent. Good Thank luck. you very much. See you okay, later on. See you soon. Okay, I've spoken with Chris very briefly. <laughs> bid. Highest bid. Mm -hmm. The top bid is £132,500. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. There's an uncomfortable silence between us. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't let you go for that. In, in some ways, what you've done here, because I think people who really want to buy this are investors, you've created such a quality product that Investors always want to come a little bit lower. Yeah. So I think that's what we're fighting against here. It's not the end of the world. It's not the end of the world. It's not. I've had a brilliant time. It's been a really great experience. It's made, if nothing else, it's made me get my finger out and finish things. Mm -hmm. Some you win and some you lose. And that's the reality with an open day. Will we succeed next time? There's only one way of finding out, and that's by joining me on Open House.